Hello and welcome to the GI Huddle. I'm Tim Poole, the editor of Gambling Aside, and I'm here with Simon Thomas, the executive chairman of the Hippodrome Casino. Simon, thanks for joining us. It's great to have you here. It's our pleasure to be speaking with you and have you on the GI Huddle. Um, to start off with, I thought we could reflect on uh, the past year. Obviously, it's uh, it's post, uh, not so much post-COVID as exactly, but definitely post-lockdown. What's it been like the past year with players back and active at the casino? It's been fantastic to have people back. It was incredible. On the uh, 17th, I think it was, of May last year, we uh, opened the doors again. We had a big chain across the front door. We cut it symbolically. It was an awful night. It was raining outside. We did it at midnight. It was a bit of a PR stunt, and we thought it might just be a damp squib. We had two or three television crews there, and we had a queue from our front door to the middle of Leicester Square. It was just the reaction from the customers who were delighted to be back just made it all worthwhile. It's been wonderful and it's built strongly since then. We've got rid of all the restrictions, regulations, crazy sort of uh, mask mandates, etc. And people are just loving being back to normal. What's it like in terms of gaming levels at the moment? Is it perhaps less players and higher bet sizes, that kind of thing? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, but what we've done quite a lot of work during lockdown. And um, part of it was on how we positioned in the market. I think we were probably underselling ourselves before, going for high volume, low spend. Uh, with the various um, social distancing, we were obviously had less people per table. So we pushed our minimums up. And as we've got uh, the social distancing rules removed, we've actually kept our minimums up there. There's no resistance from the customers. Uh, and it's been very good. The quid pro quo is the middle spending customers have probably moved on to the electronics and they're doing particularly well as well so we're winning both ways. Mm -hmm. um, I understand as well it's a big anniversary year for the Hippodrome can you talk us through uh, your plans and kind of how you plan to celebrate this? Oh, absolutely the 10th anniversary on the uh, 13th of July it's been an incredible journey for, for me the journey actually started in 2005 getting the building, three years to get planning and permits, three years to rebuild. So I was already six years in, by, even by the time we opened the doors. And when I look back on the uh, development of the building, it, we're a completely different business from what we started with. We've all learned a lot, and the 10th anniversary gives us both the time to celebrate and reflect on the past, but also build for the future. Because we've done lots of changes recently, and uh, we're very excited for the second decade. Um, talking of kind of celebration and, and people coming together, this week it's, it's Ice Week, um, a big week for the industry. We haven't had it for um, over two years now because it was obviously meant for February as well. Um, what does kind of coming back to Ice mean for you and kind of uh, your colleagues and peers in the wider industry? Uh, it's magnificent. Uh, I've, my, my Ice Week started on Friday night because people were already here in London talking. We have had dinners, um, meetings already, and as you can feel the uh, excitement building. And the amount of people that emailed me saying, am I going to be at ICE? Like, uh, hello, I kind of live here. <laughs> but um, you can see people wanting to be back in the, the real world, three-dimensional. I gave a talk this morning at IceFox. And um, to be in a room where you can actually see people, you can assess their, assess their reaction. You can get a, so much more feedback. When you try to do that in two dimensions on a screen, it's absolutely impossible. And uh, we are an amazing industry. We, we thrive on excitement and entertainment and communication, and we all learn from each other. Uh, for me, ICE is brilliant because I go there during the day, and then everybody from ICE comes here in the evening. We're almost like the canteen. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a pretty intense time, but it's great fun. Um, absolutely. I mean, I can totally relate to what you mean about 3D because I'm used to doing these over Zoom, just looking at the computer screen. But here we are. We've got people. We've got a, a physical back, background. Um, in terms of IceFox, were there kind of any big talking points that came out of the conferences that, that you were a, a part of? Uh, not really. I think it was just more we had the representatives on my panel were from Europe, Africa and the States. And it, it really rams home. We're in a global industry. It's the same issues, same challenges everywhere. Um, and I think it's just helpful to have gathering, gatherings like that because we can all help each other. Mm -hmm. A final couple of topics for me will be looking ahead. Um, my last question will be kind of, you know, plans and targets going forward. But my penultimate question, you can't answer the last one without this one because it's the, uh, the UK Gambling Act review, which we've been waiting a long time for and we are still waiting for. Um, but I wanted to ask you, um, in terms of what you're anticipating, how could it potentially affect the land-based sector? Because obviously there's, there's a lot of discussion about how it will affect online operators, but what does it mean for casinos such as the Hippodrome and, and the wider industry? 
Well, it should be good. The three reasons for this review were to um, allow changes in legislation to allow for what's happened since 2005, to rebalance between online and offline, and to make sure the balance is there between player protection and player um, opportunity and freedom. And the land-based side is, is crying out for change on all of the above. Uh, the 2005 Act started a pilot uh, with larger numbers of slot machines in casinos. We obviously got the 80 and 150 machine casinos. That pilot has never been concluded. It was supposed to be concluded in 2013. This is the opportunity to do it. We put a very good case, uh, asked to fairly modest, which is to go up to 80 slot machines, um, more versions of electronic, um, electronic versions of table games and a sports book. They're all sensible, normal things in a casino like this. And if you actually think of the logic of the slot machine thing, in your pocket you've got a mobile phone with an infinite number of games. On Saturday night, I had 1,500 people in here at uh, peak time. Only 20 were allowed to play a slot machine. There's no logic to that. It's, it's a restriction on business. It's a restriction on consumer freedom. And it's probably um, bad from a, a, a problem gambling point of view because it encourages people to stay longer on their machine. Um, so if we can get this change through, which we should do, it'll lead to bigger, better casinos in the UK, more investment, um, more money for the tax man, more happy customers. Uh, it's kind of win-win all round. And, uh, and dare I say, there'll be more mini hippodromes, but nothing quite like what we've got here. So assuming, um, you know, as you say, the, the white paper is published and, and everything goes to plan, um, and the celebrations that you mentioned earlier, what are kind of your, your goals and, and targets looking at the rest of 2022? Well, for us, we're on such a journey with great momentum. The, the white paper's almost um, irrelevant. It's, it's a nice to have. But during lockdown, we, we took the opportunity, we were shut for 320 days. After getting over the initial shock, we then went into, we can manage through this, we've got the cash, and now what can we do that we couldn't do um, uh, when we were actually operating 24-7? So we rebuilt our third, fourth, fifth floors, we added a roof terrace on, we doubled the size of our fourth floor, giving us another four tables outside. We moved our poker into new rooms and they are just magnificent and rebuilt the old poker area as the God's Casino. And then we managed finally to get two shop units on the front of the building that we've hitherto not been able to get hold of. And it's given us the opportunity and um, within three or four months, the whole front will be unified. There'll be a cafe with um, cafe tables out on the high street. Underneath it will be a secret bar where you kind of go in through the back door of a, the kitchen. In this case, it'll be a big fridge door. Um, and a Chinese restaurant. So we've got our work cut out with just all the various bits that are already in pipeline. If the white paper gives us a few more freedoms, then we will uh, absorb and love it. Well, plenty to look forward to there. Best of luck and thanks very much for joining us, Simon. Pleasure. You're very welcome.